Our first reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about, himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized them. When he, they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesar. Or Caesarea, sorry. And our second reading this morning comes from John. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Over the past week, things have happened that I think have probably shocked most of us to our core. What are the two main things for you that have really stood out in this past week. The earthquake in Nepal. The earthquake in Nepal. Absolutely. All of us have been completely astounded by that tragedy. That in a situation, a country where there is so few resources, so little infrastructure like we would know, to face such devastation of thousands of lives lost of people in all sorts of situations who still are struggling and waiting to receive help. It's quite natural in that situation to ask ourselves, God, why? Where are you, God? Why did this happen? What else has happened this week 
that has uh, struck us to our core? The floods in Brisbane. Yep, once again. The executions. The executions in Indonesia. In Indonesia, where they still have the death penalty, like a number of other countries, including America, we see people that no matter what they may have done, face execution by firing squad in Indonesia's case. And as I thought about that and the, four, the, other eight, or the whole eight people themselves who were there, I was struck by an image that I hadn't seen before where they showed where they were shot. Did you notice what they had set up for each one of them? A cross to hold their arms behind them to stand on a cross I just the whole thing uh, I found quite overwhelming and then with all that reading from our first reading this morning like a sheep led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shearer is silent they did not open their mouth in their humiliation, justice was taken away from them. Who can tell the story of his descendants because life was taken from this one? The eunuch asks Philip, who's this talking about? And Philip goes on to talk about Jesus and that story. But in its original understanding, Israel, Israel, the whole people of Israel, understood themselves to be those who would be led like sheep to the slaughter. It was something they experienced many times in their lives. It was something that was part of who they were, their very psyche. And as we saw what happened, where justice still had not been run completely, we saw eight people being led to the slaughter. It still happens in many other parts of the world. Let's not just look at Indonesia, but in so many places in the world. And the other thing that struck me about what was happening in Indonesia was that these men, who no matter what they had done before, had been reformed. In some way or form, their life was now changed. And right to the end, the two men were caring for the others around them. They were singing. Did you hear what they reported? They sang Amazing Grace. And then, before they were shot, there was one other song they sang. Be Still My Soul. Absolutely moving. And in the midst of that, the shots rang out. I can't help but be stirred deep within my core that we cannot allow stuff like this to go on. What does it mean when we read in John's Gospel that I am the vine and you are the branches? What does it mean for us to live out that love? Does it mean that uh, we just go, oh yes, well God loves you and that's it? Do we leave it as something simple and trite? Because that's not what it's about. This vine being stripped back and enabled to bear fruit is about our lives as well. Things happen to us. We face situations which challenge the very core of our being. As we faced and saw what happened in Nepal, it would have been quite normal to think, God, where are you? Why? Why could this happen? It shatters our illusion of an interventionist God who will just drop in and fix things wherever we might like and stop the things that happen around us from happening. We know that doesn't work that way. We still would like to think of it sometimes. But what we do discover is an abiding love. A love that is there deep within all that goes on. So yes, human tragedy is part of life. It is part of all of our lives, both individually and corporately. 
And what we saw in Nepal and are still seeing is that on a huge scale, with thousands of lives lost. Many, many more thousands now having to rebuild their lives. But what did you notice within all that tragedy? Among the little tent cities that were being set up. Did you notice something? Caring and sharing. There among people who had nothing. They would find what little they had and shared it with another. And there's even reports saying that life has taken on a sense of normality. I don't know how it could in that, but where people have set up together, working on providing rice, food, water, in the midst of, well, a seemingly failure of infrastructure, people building their own. The Italian crew coming in to rescue didn't know where to go, so they just helped themselves. They just got on and did it and set up and began to make a difference. And in the midst of the tragedy, somehow, some people survive. That, for me, is these little seeds of hope that even in the midst of the most awful situations, situations you think would make you just want to give up, new life begins to sprout. New life begins to show forth. An opportunity to do something new happens. It says to me that in all of our lives, as we've found our lives stirred up by all these situations, that God is breaking the ground of our hearts and calling for us to do something, calling for us to, to share and care in whatever way we can. It's a thing we can do quite easily. But there is also for me another call, a call to live lives based on justice, love, compassion. And that means working hard to overcome situations that bring about death. It means doing the hard work of writing to whoever we need to write to, of making people aware of what's going on around the world, in standing up against all the powers of death wherever they might be found in our world and saying no there is another way we saw in those two men lives that can be transformed we know it's true even in our own lives that we can be transformed that the person we once were we no longer are we now see life in a new way. And we know that that happens again and again and again. Every step of our lives, every moment that we live and breathe is another opportunity for God to grow something new within us, to grow love within us that overflows and makes a difference. It's not just a word, it's an action, a way of living and being. We see in the life of Jesus someone who also was led like a lamb to the slaughter. It is part of our faith. We carry around with us, and in most of our Protestant churches we don't see it, but the crucifix, the body hanging on the cross. And I sometimes am sad that we've kind of thrown the baby out with the bathwater with our whole Zwinglian approach of uh, only emphasising the resurrection. Because I think we need to remember that at our core, at the very core of our being, is a crucified faith. One that seeks and looks for hope and life even in the midst of crucifixion. We will all continue to face tragedies. We will all face great challenges to our faith around the world, within our families, within our lives. But no matter what challenge we might face, wherever there is that spirit that calls for, for evil acts, for death, for no life, God continues to raise up new life within us to break forth those fruits that
that bear within us the fruit of that love that God has stirred within each and every life. It's been going on for thousands of years. It still is the same today. So today, in the midst of all that has happened, let us take up again that call to be grafted into that vine, to share God's love with all and to work to make a real difference in our world. For in us, in us, love is made known. Amen.